Back to Senator Blackburn, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Secretary Austin, uh, why don't we make our intelligence reports public? Uh, we share as, as much as we can from uh, our intel reports, uh, but as you know, would we you, have to be uh, yeah, careful about agree, protect, yeah. protect, protecting sources and methods right. so that we don't lose capability. And would you agree that giving our adversaries access to our intel reports is a poor decision? Uh, exactly. I, I think okay. that's something that we absolutely work to avoid. Okay. And so then why did senior Biden officials hold nearly half a dozen meetings with top Chinese officials to give them information on Russian troop movements? Uh, I, I don't know of it. Of uh, I don't have insights on any occurrences yeah. like that. So. Okay. So it seems the Chinese called up their comrades in Russia and sent Moscow the intel that Biden staffers provided them. And it appears that U.S. officials knew Beijing gave the intel to Moscow. So I would imagine you do not support giving Russia our intelligence. Uh, I, I am unfamiliar with uh, okay. the issue that you raised, uh, okay. but you are right. I, I do not support giving our adversaries. All right, General Milley, under what circumstances, if any, have you advised intelligence sharing with Beijing? Zero. Never. Thank you. Given what we know now about how that subsequently shared information, this intelligence, went to Moscow, what would you advise for similar scenarios going forward? I don't think you should give intelligence okay. to your adversary, period. Thank you. What senior leader is ultimately responsible for this decision of intel sharing? Is it you? Is it uh, Secretary Austin? Is it Jake Sullivan? Is it the president? Who is it? I'll let the, I mean, my, my opinion is, uh, I'll give you a couple answers to that. One is the Director of National Intelligence is responsible for all the intelligence agencies in the... National in Intelligence. DNI, Averill Hange. So that's okay. the person who's technically responsible, but obviously the President is responsible for everything that, that the government does, the executive branch does. Uh, and then each of us are responsible within our areas of responsibility. Okay. So um, under what authorities would we share our intelligence with Beijing? Um, I would ask that you ask these questions of the DNI. However, uh, my knowledge of the system is is that the president and or uh, the director of national intelligence or perhaps the director of the CIA or something like that does have authorities, uh, but I don't know what those are specifically, okay. and it's not something I can answer with accuracy. So it's not a, a practice you approve of, but we do know that it has happened, correct? I don't know that it's happened. I, I'm not aware of what you're talking about, actually. Okay. We've talked a good bit about Afghanistan today. So did Biden's precipitous withdrawal from Afghanistan, which really fed perceptions of America in retreat, uh, did that play a role in shaping Putin's decision to invade Ukraine? From the intelligence I've read, uh, it's not clear. Um, I think it certainly is possible, but I also know that Putin had aims on Ukraine long before the end of uh, the war in Afghanistan. In fact, I in think October, we all know that. Yeah. So and he saw his opening, right? Well, the forces were building up. Uh, yeah. They began to build up their forces in September, October. So right. uh, I, I think in order to do that, they would have had to have the plans and approval long before September, October. They have a habit of moving forward at the end of the Olympics. They did it in 08, yeah, sure. they did it in 14. We were watching and the White House chose not to move forward. I wanna ask you, you have both failed, and this comes to each of you, to share with us the budget line items for diversity and inclusion initiatives. And much less uh, any way that you would tie those initiatives to war fighting. But public reporting has given us some insight into what is being spent and how some of that money has be, been spent. And Secretary Austin, earlier this year, there was a report that said the Department of Defense is to studying the issue of allowing gender non-binary people to serve in the military. Is that true? 
I am uh, supportive of allowing any uh, person that's eligible and can meet the qualifications to serve their country. And who is involved in the study? Are uniformed military personnel involved? I, I can't speak to, uh, okay. at this point, who is involved in, in, in any of the studies that, uh, that we have ongoing, just off the top of my head, but I'll certainly take the question for you. And what will the living arrangements be made for non-binary service members? Are you all going to come back to us and ask for an appropriation for housing? Senator, any study that we do, it will make certainly be transparent and make it available to you. And what about gender fluid individuals? How will you handle a service member who identifies as male on some days and female on other days or polygender I, I won't, individuals? I, I don't care to speculate on, on uh, you know, what we're going to uh, ask you for or, or what we're going to, uh, how we're going to qualify people again, again. Some of this is in litigation in various states, and you know I think uh, uh, it's best to take your question for the record. Okay, uh, I have some questions, Mr. Chairman, that I'll submit for the record. But thank Secretary you, Senator Austin. I do have some questions on hypersonics. Well, uh, we will be going immediately, Senator Blackburn, into a right. classified session, and those questions I think could be answered there. Uh, gentlemen, let me thank you for your your testimony. Uh, we will adjourn the open hearing and uh, reconvert, reconfer <laughs> reconstitute the committee and SB uh, 217 at 12:30, uh, and uh, we'll at the.